there is a centre, there must be borders. Where there are borders, there must be limits. When one is clear, life goes on, but without the me as the centre. This is unlimited life. It is the final transcendence of the selfing process. Belief can never know reality. Belief is the result of conditioning or the result of seeking comfort from an outer or inner authority. Many come here seeking Wu Sin's authority. Can't you see that freedom is freedom from authority? Wu Xin is no one's authority. Don't make him into one. Don't accept anything as the truth, his words included, until you can affix your personal stamp to it. Your confusion can only end when you are the sole authority. The ashes of a dead fire provide neither heat nor light. So it is with viewpoints of those who represent themselves as knowledgeable. Whereas philosophers and scholars can talk captivatingly, they are lacking in the direct experience that provides the ring of authority. One cannot serve as a guide to a place to which one has never been. Embodied consciousness depends on the condition of the brain and the senses. The mind is a force operating on the brain. The thoughts of the world are in the brain, within the body. When a person dreams, they create themselves and the world they occupy. It is only a mental projection. The waking state is another. In this sense, nothing can trouble you except for your own imagination. No matter what the condition of the moment or the condition of the world, you are. Without you, nothing is. The world cannot be experienced from outside of the world. As such, an instrument for experiencing inside the world is required. This instrument is the brain in a body. We imagine that experiences are something we have rather than something that we are. 
Yet even that is inaccurate. We are not the experiences. We are the experiencing. Whereas the biological imperative is to survive, the psychological imperative is to become. Be clear about how you are driven by this psychological imperative. You spend your entire life chasing security and permanency. In point of fact, there is no security or permanency. As such, you become a conspirator against reality by forsaking it for the illusory. Begin by pleading guilty to this charge. You can't see what is looking. You can only be what is looking. Stop holding on to conceptual thinking as a style of understanding. It is what holds back understanding. The noise of the self-consciousness prevents its own destruction. Noise can never produce silence. Noise perpetuates further noise, which in turn insulates the self-consciousness from dissolution. As the lake is not calm until the winds cease, the mind has no peace until the movement of self-centric thought ends. What is natural lacks inattention in the same way as the rainfall does not intend to irrigate the rice field. One must reject the allure of progressive becoming. The conscious thought, I must get it, can be as much of an impediment as any other which appears in the mind. In the absence of becoming, being shines. How did this body become you when it was unfertilized, inert ovum? It wasn't you. When it was fertilized and began to develop, it wasn't you. It only became you when you were told it was you. 
It is merely a developed seed. And you are the observing of the seed. You are as you have always been. It is only with the arrival of self-consciousness that you and other than you have come to be your belief. You are already the highest. What else can say, I am? What else can think, I am? Without you, nothing can be. Can this shirt be in the absence of thread? Wu Xin always talks about the same thing. The world as macrocosm. The body-mind as microcosm. And the source of both. We observe that the temporal bows to the eternal. And the relative whispers to the absolute. And that mind both creates and perceives matter. As mind it creates, and as mind it perceives and passes. Although the authentic I consciousness comprises everything, neither beginning nor ending with the body, it always remains unassociated with anything. The world is a framework of concepts based on names and forms. Name is represented by language, whereby we label our perceptions as objects. In this manner, one creates differentiations, including the duality of I and not I. Form represents our sensory perceptions. The world appears in waking and dream, along with the mind, and disappears in deep sleep when the mind goes into abeyance. Thus, the world is a projection of the mind. These words offer a singular example, not of a thought process, but of a lived experience. Listen to these talks, not so much with the idea of learning, but allowing what is being transmitted to take root. If it is true, it will take root unconsciously, and if it is not true, it will rot and die. The message 
is not difficult to comprehend. One is not creating jade. The jade is already there in the mud. One understands that it was the looking outward that was the missing it. To register the discontinuous, something prior must be continuous. To register absence, something prior must be present. This something has many names, yet cannot be proven. It is its own proof. Listen to Wu Sin as one would listen to music. No interpretation. No projection, no thought, simply silent welcoming. In so doing, it will be new, even if it has been heard before. Only when the structure is torn down can the underlying foundation be exposed? In your case, this structure is a self-consciousness. The paradox, however, is that there is nothing you can do to take the structure down because any effort the you makes only serves to reinforce the idea of a you. You continue to believe that Wu Sin has something which you do not have. You are mistaken. What Wu Sin has, you have in equal measure. Why then do you continue to be like the duck that envies the crane's legs? Wu Sin has no monopoly on what is true. Although there may be many paths, the summit is singular. That point at which you know you are is the doorway between the relative and the absolute. On the one side is duality and on the other is eternity. All manifestation or actualization is an energetic movement in the stillness of potentiality. Once one accepts that all is consciousness, 
one sees that me is the I thought made material into a body. And the world is the other than I thought made material. In this manner, duality is reduced to I am and this is. Wu Xin has no rules. There is no law, only primordial awareness. No vows are required other than the intention to live in the state of natural consciousness. This naturalness if left in its pure state, without seeking to modify it in any way, will manifest. Mind is like space, intrinsically empty, as there are objects appearing in space, there are thoughts appearing in mind. The objective world is in the subjective. The self is therefore the only reality which permeates and envelops the world. Understanding means discovering one's own true condition, stripped of all the self-deceptions and falsifications which the mind creates. Wu Xin speaks of one's true nature. But what is one's true nature? One's true nature is one's true potential the potential to see beyond one's potential to the potentiality itself. Wu Xin has provided you with the address of the door. The door has kept you out for so long. The same door lets you in. Simply go there and wait. From that point, it can only come to you. You cannot go to it. Continuance is one. In deep sleep, and in death, what continues is the same. I am present always 
when the body, senses and other objects appear, as well as when they disappear. When true clarity arrives, one will not need Wu Sin's stamp of authenticity. When one becomes a seeker, one becomes limited by the seeking. This is not the path to the unlimited. Uusin's words must become a living knowledge in all of one's daily activities. This is the essence of what one may call practice. And besides that, there is nothing in particular to be done. Manifestation arises out of being, source. What arises from source cannot be anything separate from source, nor can it be other than source. Other cannot exist until you exist. The world cannot exist unless you do. All thought finds its support in the I thought. Subsequent thought ensues from it. This is the root of mind. Teachings are many, whereas true knowers of teachings are few. Laundering is the removal of dirt from cloth. Investigation is the removal of the false from what is. When every this has been removed. That is what remains. What could be more simple to understand? The I thought is a scent of the conscious life energy. When the scent is followed back to its source, the self-consciousness returns to consciousness and the me returns to I. It is the end of fragmentation. It can be found in the space between two thoughts. When the thought flow is slowed, the space is more readily perceived. Seeing through the mind is like trying to study the ocean. 
when it is turbulent and frothy, it is difficult to see clearly. But when it is calm, it reveals itself. Only when the mind is not turbulent, then understanding can ensue. To renounce the world of wealth and position is a comparatively simple matter in relation to putting aside the craving to become. All effort to control is suppression. This too applies to your efforts to control the pace of your enlightenment. Your efforts to bring it about only delay it. You are sitting in the audience watching the play of life on stage. What effort do you need to make in order for the play to continue? What is added to wood to make it a stick? Form is added to substance, to essence. In the same way, all forms are merely additions to essence. What can be separate from it? (laughs) 